everybody. If any of y'all have seen my videos in the past, you know that I have kids, so we keep all kinds of little critters. So I thought I'd show you guys how to make a cheap um, critter cage. Right now we've got baby praying mantises, so we have to we have to separate them so they don't eat each other. So I figured out a way to make a cage for about a dollar fifty. And things you're gonna you're gonna need is you're gonna need one of these. It's called a splatter screen. I bought this at the one dollar store for a buck. And so you need this screen. You're gonna need one of these plastic food containers. I got two of these. They come in a in a little two pack. I got these at the dollar store for a buck. So it's gonna cost you about a dollar fifty to make each cage because this is gonna you're gonna have to have two of these screens to make two cages and two of these which they come in a two pack, so you'll have two. So it'll be about a dollar fifty a cage. You're going to need, this is clear duct tape. It comes, you can either get it with this little fancy thing, or, you know, you can just get it by the roll. It's a two, three, four dollars, something like that. You're going to need a, an X-Acto knife. I'm using an Expo um, um, marker for a board because I want to be able to erase it. A couple pair of scissors. I picked up, a, I've got a really small pair and a bigger pair. And you're going to need a ruler right here. Anyways, and I've got a piece of glass down here to cut on so I don't cut my table up. But you could use anything, cutting board or whatever to cut on. Okay, so first you want to do is you want to take your screen, your splatter screen here. Just take the packaging off of it and get it off. I'm going to take your screen. I'd lay it on your cutting surface. Use your X-Acto knife. Make a cut around the edge, as close to the edge as you can get. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take my, I found my little scissors work better for this because you can get in a little closer. And I'm going to go around the edge. And I'm going to cut the screen off its, um, off the splatter uh, frame. So that way you can use the screen, and obviously you're not going to use the frame, so you just throw it away when you're done. Or if you can find another use for it, I guess you can do that too. This takes a minute, so bear with me. And these, by the way, are little uh, sewing scissors. They tend to be a little sharper. You can get them in little sewing kits. You can buy them in a couple where they come, you know, like with this pair of scissors and a couple other pairs of scissors. And they're really, really sharp, so they cut really easy. Okay, now as you cut your screen off, there's your screen. It'll be round, so we're going to set this aside. Don't need this thing. We're just going to toss that. Okay, and then you want to take your container. And you want to take the lid off. And this container, and you can see this kind of has a middle area, and that's what you're going to use. You can make it smaller, you could make it bigger, but I really wouldn't. Oh, I forgot to tell you what kind of size containers these are. These are the uh, 7.56 cup containers. They're, you know, they're kind of a good size container. But anyway, so you want to take your lid, and you want to take your exacto knife, and I'm going to I'm going to cut this little middle piece out here. And that's going to be the top. I'm going to put screen in there here in a minute. So, anyways. So, you want to cut around with your X Acto knife. Sometimes it'll pop out. Other times, I, you might want to use your scissors to cut it out if you need to. You can do that too. This is going to be stubborn, I can see. doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to put the screen on the inside so it's not that big of a deal if the cut's perfect okay well I'm going to use my bigger scissors so I found this works pretty good makes it a little easier sometimes anyways Okay. 
There we go. Okay. So you're going to have a hole like this. Then you want to take your measuring thing. And I'm going to leave half an inch on either side. On both, on all four sides. So, <clears throat> this is a little over. It's a little over six. It's not quite six and a half. So it's just a, two little hash marks after the six. So I'm going to do that. And then... You're going to make it four. So I'm going to make it four by just a little over six. So you're going to take your net here, and then you're going to top, do your measurement at the very top of it, just beyond the curve if you can, because you don't, you want to make sure that you leave plenty of net to do your thing. Okay, so then you're going to take your marker, and you'll be able to see it on your netting fairly decently. And you're just going to do out your measurements. You don't have to be perfect, perfect. So, you know, if they're a little off, it's not that big of a deal as long as you have enough of a thing. And then I'm going to take my thing and my net. And I'm going to lay my net. Oh yeah, see, that way I know that my markings, sorry, that way I know I have enough margin, you probably can't see it, but yeah, I just want to place it over before I cut it, and that's going to be big enough, and then you're going to take your scissors, you can use your big scissors or small scissors, I'm going to use my big scissors, and you're going to cut along your line. Get it cut. Okay. And I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to cut both the long sides first. And you're going to need this part of your net, so don't throw that away. Because you're going to need it for the sides. Okay. So. Now that you got your net cut, should be a little rectangle. Okay, and we're going to fit it make sure that it fits. And it does. You can round these edges if you want a little bit. It'll make them a little easier to tape if you want to do that. But you don't have to. It's not a big deal. And then I'm going to take my clear tape. My clear duct tape. This is duct tape. So you want to use duct tape. This is clear duct tape. Which my husband didn't know you could buy. But anyways. So I'm going to kind of measure it. And then this is a little too big, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my scissors. Oh, there should be on it. Okay. And then there should be else on it, anyways. And I'm going to cut it in half. Maybe. And anyways, this is going to be stubborn, I see. And I'm going to use both halves, so I'm just going to hang this off my table here so I have it to use. And I'm going to set my netting. You want to do this on the inside of the lid. And I'm going to take the tape. I'm going to put it on the edge. And I'm going to tape it to the lid. You just want to smooth it down. Make sure it attaches. See, like this. See where I got the tape here at the bottom. And then that way, that way it'll stay. I'm going to take my other piece of tape. Since this is a long piece, I'm going to do it to the other side too. You can add more tape if you need to on each side. Then I'm going to take my tape again. And because I, I need to do side pieces, I'm going to kind of measure out for that. Cut it in half again. your hands a little bit and I'm going to take this edge and you could use these for other bugs too my kids are always bringing something home my daughter's obsessed with bugs but you know as long as she doesn't bring ants in the house and I've told her to stay away from spiders 
And it could be even used for little frogs and stuff. Anyways. So I've taped all these, just screen on all the edges. A little hard to see, so this is what it should look like. I know it's kind of see-through, but it is screen. This is a really fine mesh so the bugs can't escape. And we're feeding our um, baby praying mantises flightless fruit flies, so this stuff works great, and it's dirt cheap. Okay, so we're going to take our lid, and we're going to set it aside. <clears throat> then you're going to take that piece of screen that you shaved, like this. And I want to cut this rounded kind of edge off here. So I'm going to just take my ruler, and I'm just going to draw, draw a straight line on each end. They don't have to be perfect. Just You want to get as straight of a piece as you can without the rounded pieces. There we go. And then I'm going to see that the line's drawn like that. Okay. Then I'm going to take and cut these off. So that leaves you a straight edge. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut another straight edge so that we don't have this rounded piece. very much it around. If you get a little bit of the round in there, it's not a big different deal. It won't hurt anything. So we're going to cut this off. Okay. Here we go. So you get another big, this is a really long rectangle, and what I'm going to do is we're going to put it on one piece on this side, and we're going to put another piece on the long side. And if you wanted to buy another screen to put little vents in the, the ends, you could do that too. It would be fine, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it in half because I want kind of an even size. And then I'm just going to cut the two pieces on the fold. There we go. So you got two little, little rectangles here. So that'll work. And they're going to be too tall, so you're going to look at them on your thing. And they're going to be a little too tall, so you... Um, you want to cut them down a little bit. So I'm going to cut these down to uh, two and a half inches. Yeah. Maybe a little more. Anyways. So. And we're just going to cut them down because they're too, they're too tall. You leave the length. You want the length. You just don't want them to tell you. Yeah, there we go. Two and a half is about what you need. Okay. And to shave so you don't have to measure, you can do this. Put the one screen next to the other and use it as you're measuring. There we go. You don't need these pieces. So these are four inches long in either way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my hole three inches long. So I'm going to take my thing, my ruler, and I'm going to put it about the middle or what you think the middle is. It doesn't have to match perfectly. And I do it with this marker because this marker I can erase. There you go. So you've got your log line. And then it's, like I said, it's about two and a half. So we're going to make it just under two, your sides. There we go. So it could be about like that. Okay. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. You're going to do that on either side. But then you're going to cut them out. And I cut out one side at a time because your marks might get messed up, you know, otherwise. So once again, you're going to take your X-Acto knife. What I do is I do diagonally, and that way I can get my scissors in there. There we go. So I'm put a diagonal cut in. Probably can't see that. Then I'm going to take get this off my scissors. I'm going to take my scissors. Cut a hole in it. Cut the little square you put on that. 
damn it. It's being a little stubborn. These things get a little stubborn sometimes. There we go. These don't have to be exactly perfect either. They just have to be pretty close. They just have to be, you know, you just have to have enough room. And then you can wipe your black mark off. With your fingers or towel, you know, whatever. There you go. So you're just going to have a hole. And you want to wipe as much as the black away because you really don't want to see it. You don't want to be looking at the black or interfere with your view. Okay. So we got most of this view, this stuff off. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Not quite two. This is a good project to do with your kids too, especially like Girl Scouts or something like that. Because you could make it a whole lesson or even teachers, because you could make it a lesson like we're gonna go outside and catch bugs and they you know they can study bugs for a day or two and then you know let them go or whatever. We've kept praying mantises for the last couple of years. And they're kind of interesting. You buy crickets at the local pet store. You can even go outside and catch crickets for them to eat. Okay. I'm going to use the scissors again. I'm to cut it just a little bit easier. This is a great project for boys, although with me it's my daughter, not my son. My son doesn't like bugs, my daughter loves them. But if you've got boys who loves bugs, which I know a lot of a lot of people do, and some of them probably have some girls out there that like bugs too, these are great projects for that. Of course you need to make sure that your kids know not to pick up things like spiders, and unless they know what the snake looks like, like I tell my kids, unless you know the snake, which my kids are really too young, you don't pick up snakes because some of them are like in Missouri we've got the rattlesnake and the copperhead. Okay, so here we go. You got a hole on either side for your bugs and we wiped all the black off of it. So then you want to take your tape again and you want to do the same as you did with the top. Scissors get to be a pain sometimes. This would be good for Boy Scouts too. Okay. Okie dokie. Then you're gonna do exactly like you did with your your um top. You're gonna take your thing, tape, put it on the thing, your piece of screen, and you're gonna tape it to the top of your, or to your plastic container. So that way the bugs can't escape. Because I don't mind bugs, but I really don't want to run around my house. So, there we Sometimes you have where the wire will pull out, just pull off the loose pieces of wire that, you know, from when you're cutting that they don't, for some reason or other, don't stay in. This tape on the top is acting a little weird sometimes. Sometimes the tape acts a little strange. I don't know why it does that, but if it does, you can use a little glue, too, to help hold it.
There we go. And sometimes you can use your side piece of tape. Whoops, that's a little bit long though. So let me cut this off just a little bit shorter. Okay, sit there a minute. You can use your side piece of tape too to hold that top one down. And that'll help hold it down. Because you want to make sure you got all the. You don't want to have any edges showing. Because if you do, your bug could escape and you don't want that to happen. Okay. Okay. Put this on just a little bit straighter here. It gets a little. A little tedious sometimes. Okay. There you go. Okay, I think you get the idea because you're going to do the same for the other side. You're going to tape your screen in. And I'm going to show you what it looks like done. Let me go get it because it's, it's out here. And this is what it looks like done. Let me move this. I used permanent marker on that side, which is why I said use the black one. So we put a stick in it. And this right here is our baby praying mantis. And the guy at the store that we bought these uh, the egg sack from suggested that for baby praying mantises, this right here is just a milk carton lid and a cotton ball soaked in water. That way you don't have an open bowl for them to drown in. And the uh, flightless fruit flies use it too. But this is what it looks like. I know this is kind of a long video, but I hope it helps somebody because I know that lots of people have kids that like bugs. And enjoy the day, and I hope you like the project. Bye.